you're just joining in, this is Business Daily on Trust TV. We have with us here in the studio the Director General of the National Automotive Design and Development Council, Jelani Ali, and he has been speaking to numerous developments in the sector just before we went on that break. Now, DG, let me come back to you, mm -hmm. especially with this issue of electric vehicle. I really want you to demystify it because mm -hmm. for some people it looks like something that is Herculean, but I want you to demystify the mm -hmm. process. Tell us about the EV stations that will be mm -hmm. powered in these vehicles mm. across the country because a lot of Nigerians are very skeptical about the whole powering of the process because of course there are still mm -hmm. issues around the electricity sector please clarify for us yes let's let's do a quick analogy uh, when you talk about problems with power yet you have probably millions of air conditioners and refrigerators actively being used in the country electric vehicles can be charged from sockets that can easily power any air conditioner so any home in Nigeria can power an electric vehicle. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we, yes, acknowledge there is that problem of mm -hmm. continuous power from the grid. Mm -hmm. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, we looked at renewable energy. And to prove that that is doable, uh, we, we designed, uh, we strategized, designed, and built three uh, solar powered, 100% solar powered electric vehicle charging stations at three locations. Uh, we built one in Sokoto, uh, the second one uh, Lagos, and then the third one in, in Suka. And we chose to put them up in universities that have energy research centers, uh, not just to prove the concept works, but to bring on, uh, bring to the doorsteps of young Nigerians at these schools uh, this advanced technology let them touch it, feel it, kick it, know that it exists, and have them go into it and come up with even better solutions. S sort of getting that technology transfer going. Yes. So electric vehicles are very viable in Nigeria, very feasible, because we can use solar energy and other renewable energy sources, especially mini grids, to power them. And uh, as we speak, we're also building a, a fourth one here in Abuja. Okay. This one will also have a supercharger that can charge these vehicles much, much quicker. So we have a blueprint that any uh, a private sector entity can come work with us and replicate these across uh, the, the country at strategic uh, locations. Okay, okay, that's great. Now, I want you to speak to issues around bilateral relations to develop the sector, because it is said that for, for, that, for most sectors to grow, it, there is need to have relations with other countries, where we have also seen some of this concept work. I know you were recently in Japan. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what we, what we should expect in terms of bilateral relations to develop the automotive sector. Yes, well, when you drive along in Nigeria, uh, a majority of the vehicles you see are Japanese. Uh, so we thought it uh, very important that we really uh, engage these OEMs even further. Uh, now, some of them are already in the country. Uh, Toyota uh, partners with Elizade here. Uh, Honda West Africa is here as an OEM uh, itself, Honda. Uh, you have uh, Mitsubishi with CFAO, uh, uh, Suzuki uh, with Bulus, um, and then uh, Yamaha also with CFAO. Uh, so some of these Japanese companies already have presence in Nigeria. But what we want them to do is to really increase exponentially that investment so that they are able to produce even uh, uh, more vehicles in Nigeria. And then beyond vehicles also, uh, we want them to go into component production. Like I mentioned, we should look at ourselves not as a closed uh, market, uh, but to plug into the global uh, uh, marketing distribution of uh, and, 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 and manufacturing uh, chain. So we had very uh, fruitful discussions with them, uh, which we are following up. Uh, since they already have investment in Nigeria, mm -hmm. increasing that investment, we feel, wouldn't be uh, too difficult for them. And uh, we also brought to their uh, attention this opportunity with AFCFTA, Africa Continental for Free Trade Agreement, which would allow them, if they set up stronger bases in Nigeria, to feed not just the Nigerian market, but the African market. And then if they do produce components in Nigeria, those components can go back to uh, other parts of the world where they assemble their vehicles. Okay, as we prepare to wrap up the program, I want you to speak to how 
what, what's, what is your council doing in terms mm -hmm. of getting more Nigerians interested in patronizing mm -hmm. the made in Nigeria vehicles? Because then mm -hmm. again, you listed a lot of people, a lot of companies. I don't want to call their names because they are not going to, <laughs> if we send invoice to them, they are not going to send the money for adverts. But you mm -hmm. listed a lot of companies. But how can we, what, what, what can we do to boost capacity of some of the local producers that we have in the country and also have more Nigerians interested in getting made in Nigeria vehicles? Because to be honest with you, I've heard a lot of Nigeria say that some of these made in Nigeria vehicles are even mm -hmm. more expensive. There are quite a number of things. Uh, to begin with, uh, to support the manufacturers, uh, we've uh, entered discussions with CBN okay. to see how special funding uh, at very low, low rates could be given to these uh, companies that produce in, in the country. And then also, on the demand side, uh, offer uh, loans to vehicle financing for people to buy these vehicles so that uh, you create the, the demand okay. and then you pump up the, the, the supply. Um, these vehicles that are assembled or produced in Nigeria are of the same standards as vehicles produced anywhere in the world. Because these companies operating in Nigeria do it at a caliber that meets international standards. So, and another thing to consider also, or to really uh, take uh, uh, cognizance of, is that when you bring in a fully built vehicle, that was meant for France or meant for Germany. You're bringing a vehicle that was sort of developed for other climbs. The roads are different, the temperatures are different, the climatic conditions are different. But these vehicles that are made in Nigeria uh, are designed, developed, and built to uh, cope with the extreme conditions, extreme heat, extreme dust, extreme usage in, in, in rough conditions. So buying a vehicle that is made here is ultimately more cost effective than bringing in a vehicle that breaks down uh, uh, not long after you start to use it. Okay, thank you so much. We have been speaking with the Director General of the National Automotive Design and Development Council, the NADDC, that's talking about Jelani Aliu. Thank you for coming on the program today. My pleasure. Thank you. Now, a lot of updates there, especially as it relates to the automotive sector. And like you have heard him say, getting a vehicle produced here in Nigeria is more cost effective than bringing a vehicle from out of the country to probably use in the country. And as we, as we talk so much about patronizing made in Nigeria goods, the vehicle industry should not also not be left out. Don't forget, you can catch up on all the information you need on news updates and also all the information you need in the world of business on all our social media platforms. Just go there and you are not going to miss out from news as they break. Thank you for investing your time with me on the program. My name is Christiana Amodu Otinya. Enjoy the rest of your day.